Hey everyone, ready for an awesome year of PS5 gaming? We're going to be going deep on the top 10 best PS5 games to play in 2024. Seriously, this list has me thinking about canceling plans. Gotta make time for these. And to help us break this all down, I've got our gaming expert here. You know, I love playing games, but they always see the trends, the tech behind it all. Always blows my mind. You make me sound like I'm some kind of gaming statistician. Maybe you are. No <laughs> shame in that. But really, what's got you excited about this list? What makes 2024 so special for PS5? It's a really cool blend of familiar games and brand new stuff. We've got some huge names coming back, games that kind of changed everything, but also a wave of completely new experiences, stuff pushing the limits of what games can be, you know? Okay, yeah, let's get into it. The list starts off strong mm -hmm. with a game that's already out, but hear me out. God of War Ragnarok. Came out in 2023, but it's still a big deal. Honestly, too big to ignore, even in 2024. What's Ragnarok doing on a 2024 list? Ragnarok, it's more than just a good game. It's like a statement. Took everything we thought God of War was and flipped it. Yeah, it's beautiful to look at, but it's the story, the feelings it gives you. That's what really gets to you. Kratos is a dad dealing with his past, trying to break the cycle of violence. It gave so much more to a character everyone thought was just all about anger. I went in expecting crazy combat and epic moments, which it definitely has. But I was surprised by how much the story pulled me in. And that's why we're still talking about it now, right? Yeah. Ragnarok changed how stories are told in these huge action games. Exactly. It proves how powerful a good story can be, that people are still saying, you have to play Ragnarok even a year later. And speaking of epic stories, yeah. let's talk about a game that has RPG fans freaking out. Yeah. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This isn't just some sequel, it's like a love letter to one of the most beloved games ever made. The hype is real. What can you tell us? Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, it's interesting. It's building on the success of not one, but TWO massive games. You've got the original, which, I mean, redefined RPG stories. Then the remake, which took those classic moments and made them for today's players. Rebirth has to live up to both, and from what I've seen, it's not afraid to try. So we're going beyond Midgar into a whole new world, all right? Mm -hmm. And story-wise, is going deeper into the characters and the events that made the original so iconic. Yeah, exactly. Taking what we know, the stuff that's stuck with players for, what, decades now? And expanding on it in ways we never thought of. And don't forget about how it plays. They're taking the combat, mixing that real-time action with strategy, making it feel new but also familiar you know it's got to be tough appealing to old fans and new <laughs> players at the same time <laughs> okay last but not least in the big hitters category right. we got to talk about everyone's favorite web slinger marvel's spider-man 2 swinging around new york city amazing but what makes this sequel different so this one, they're not just doing the typical sequel stuff, bigger map, new suit, that's not it. What's really interesting is we get two main characters, Peter Parker and D. Miles Morales. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Two Spider-Men, double the action, sure, but that also means way more story possibilities, right? Yeah. We can see how Peter and Miles approach fighting crime differently, how their powers and their personalities work together, or maybe even clash. We get to see what being Spider-Man means from two completely different points of view. And the first game nailed that Spider-Man feeling. The way you move, the combat, I can't even imagine how much better it'll be with Miles' powers added in alongside Peter. It's gonna be awesome, and it shows that the developers really care about pushing superhero games forward. This isn't just a fun action game, it's about telling a really good story with characters we actually care about. Well said. So epic adventures, stories that hit you in the feels, and superhero action, and we're just getting started. Stick with us as we check out some brand new games that are pushing gaming in new directions. All right, we've had our big sequels, but that's just the start. Now we're going somewhere completely new with some seriously cool brand new games. First up, Stellar Blade. This one has people comparing it to another action RPG that blew up a few years back. Yeah, you can't talk about Stellar Blade without mentioning Nier Automata. They've both got that stylish, fast combat, that mix of sci-fi and fantasy, but Stellar Blade is doing its own thing, for sure. I love games that take inspiration from the greats, but still do something new. And the gameplay I've seen, Stellar Blade looks so smooth and visually stunning. Mm. That whole dystopian world, humanity on the edge, it's mm. giving me those classic sci-fi vibes, you know? And here's the kicker. Stellar Blade is PS5 only. That means the developers could use everything the PS5 can do. Not just prettier graphics, we're talking about worlds that feel real. Gameplay that responds to you, even that haptic feedback, so you feel every time you swing a sword. Hold on, I gotta jump in here. Not everyone listening might know what haptic feedback is. What is it, and why is it a big deal? 
You ever get so into a game, you almost feel what the character feels. Haptic feedback takes that way further. It uses vibrations and little movements in the controller to make it feel real. In Stellar Blade, you won't just see your character swing, you'll feel it in your hands. The impact, even the resistance as you pull back for another swing. Whoa, that's wild. Like, it's the difference between watching a movie and actually being in the movie. Exactly. When it's done right, haptic feedback makes games so much more immersive. And speaking of immersive, let's switch gears completely. Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. This game is all about humor, heart, and a main character you won't forget. Okay, if you haven't played the Li Like a Dragon games, formerly known as Yakuza, get ready for something different. Not your typical fantasy RPG. We're talking hilarious dialogue, side quests that are out there, and the main guy, Ichiban Kasuga, you can't help but love him. So what makes Infinite Wealth stand out? The Like a Dragon series, it's always been about finding the funny in everyday stuff, the heart in unexpected places, and of course, a whole lot of fighting. What's interesting about Infinite Wealth is they're taking Ichiban, who's very much rooted in Japanese culture, and mm. dropping him right into America. That's bold, and knowing this series, they're going to have a blast with it. Oh, for sure. Imagine the culture clashes, all the misunderstandings, the fish out of water stuff. It's going to be hilarious. But they'll also use that to talk about new things, introduce new characters, and tell a story that's funny. Andy makes you feel something, you know? It's that mix, the humor, the heart, the over-the-top action that makes these games special. Okay, from Like a Dragon, let's go down memory lane with a couple of remastered games. First, The Last of Us Part Two Remastered. No need to introduce this one, but for those who missed it, what's the big deal? The Last of Us Part Two, it's a masterpiece, no question. It changed how stories are told in games, but it was heavy, man, even for experienced gamers. This remaster, it's not about changing the game, it's about letting more people experience it, giving those who already played it a chance to go back, see it with better graphics, faster loading, and feel it all with the PS5's haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. You mentioned adaptive triggers. Some people might not know. What are those? What do they add? Okay, so imagine pulling a trigger in a game, and instead of it feeling the same every time, you can feel the tension building, the click, almost like holding a real gun. That's adaptive triggers. Makes it super realistic, another way to connect to the game. In The Last of Us Part Two, which is all about tension and feeling like you're there, those little details are huge GE. It's like they're trying to break down the wall between you and the game, pull you right into it. Speaking of which, another amazing game is getting the PS5 treatment, Ghost of Tsushima. This game already looked insane on PS4, but what's different this time around? Ghost of Tsushima, it was like a love letter to those old samurai movies. Beautiful landscapes, amazing combat, a story that hooks you. This PS5 version, it takes all that and makes it even better. Imagine those huge fields of grass, but with so much detail you can practically see every blade. Sunlight through the trees, the wind and the bamboo, it's like stepping inside a painting. And with those faster PS5 loading times, no more staring at loading screens forever, more time exploring Tsushima Island. You got it. And it's not just what you see. The haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers, they change how the combat feels. You feel the bowstring when you pull back an arrow, the clash of your sword when you block an attack. Small things, but they make a huge difference. Seems like there's a pattern here with these remasters. It's not just about nostalgia, right? It's about taking these classics and making them the best they can be, using the PS5 to make them truly immersive. For sure. It shows how much these games still have to offer, and it's a great way for players who missed out to finally experience them. Nicely put. Okay, gamers, get ready for our last category, the genre giants. These are the games pushing boundaries, the ones leaving their mark on the industry. And we're back, ready to tackle the big ones, those games that define their genres. Let's start with some serious fighting action Tekken. This series has been knocking it out of the park for years, but what's got people hyped for this one? Tekken has always been pushing the boundaries of what fighting games can do, technology-wise. And Tekken 8, it's really something else. Unreal Engine 5, it's a game changer. Okay, I've heard the buzz about Unreal Engine 5, but for those who don't know, what's the big deal? Imagine character models so detailed, so lifelike, you can see the sweat on their faces. Environments that change with every punch, every explosion, lighting that looks real, not just some video game effect. That's Unreal Engine 5. It's not just about looking good, it's about making things feel real. A level of detail we haven't seen before. Makes sense. 
So for Tekken, a game all about fast, brutal combat, I guess yeah, that would be huge. Exactly. It's about pulling you into that fight, making you feel every hit. And we got to talk about the gameplay. What can we expect? New characters, fighting styles, what's got Tekken fans coming back for more? Tekken 8, it's walking this tightrope between what you know and love and something totally new. Old school fans, they'll find their favorites, each with the moves and styles that make them unique. But they're also fresh faces, new fighters, adding even more to a combat system that's already crazy deep and rewarding. Definitely a game for those who put in the time to master it. Casual players, hardcore fans, everyone can find something to love in Tekken 8. Okay, from the intensity of the fighting arena, let's journey to a world of ancient secrets, brutal combat, and yeah, probably a few too many deaths along the way. We're talking Elden Ring, this game, it took the world by storm, and people are still feeling its impact. Why is that? Why should PS5 owners still be hyped about Elden Ring in 2024? Elden Ring, it's more than just a game, it's an experience. It took what people loved about those Souls-like games, made it better, bigger, create something amazing and terrifying at the same time. The world they built, unbelievable, huge, interconnected, makes you want to explore every corner. But what keeps people coming back, even years later, the challenge. Oh yeah, I've heard the stories. People rage quitting, controllers flying across the room. Then, hours later, the victory screams. It's the kind of game that makes you work for it, right? Mm -hmm. Skill, patience, Maybe a little luck sprinkled in. Let's just say you'll appreciate every win in Elden Ring. But that feeling that you conquered something truly tough, that's what gets you hooked. And now, PS5 upgrades. You get to experience that world looking better than ever, loading faster, more immersive than ever before. So even if you brave the lands between the first time around, there's a reason to go back to Elden Ring on the PS5. 100%. Like, seeing a familiar place, but noticing new things, discovering new details. And for those who haven't played it yet, there's no better time. Just maybe uh, have a spare controller handy, just in case. Duly noted. All right, last but not least, we're going back to a classic. It's had its fair share of remakes already, but this one's something special. Resident Evil 4 Remake. They're taking a survival horror masterpiece and bringing it to a new generation. What makes this version stand out? Resident Evil 4, man, that game means a lot to people. Remaking it, that's a bold move. But Capcom, they pulled it off. They captured what made the original great while updating it for today. So this isn't just about better graphics, right? We're talking about more than a fresh coat of paint. Oh, way more. This is like, they started from scratch and rebuilt it. The story, the gameplay, it's all there, but they polished it up, expanded on it, modernized it, and the horror. They really went for it this time. And the original Resident Evil 4 wasn't exactly sunshine and rainbows. How'd they make it even scarier? They leaned into the psychological horror, you know? The sounds, the lighting, where the enemies pop out, it gets under your skin, makes you feel constantly uneasy. Even if you know what's coming, it still works. They found ways to make the familiar feel new and terrifying. So you're saying it's a chance to revisit a classic, but also see it in a whole new light, a whole new level of creepiness. Yeah, exactly. It's nostalgic and fresh at the same time. Familiar, but brand new. That's kind of the theme for today, isn't it? Big sequels trying new things with their stories, brand new games using the latest technology, remastered classics reminding us why we love them in the first place. What a time to be playing games on PS5. So with all these incredible games coming out, what has you most pumped for the future of gaming? What gets me excited is how many different kinds of games are out there now. There's literally something for everyone. Hardcore gamers, people who just want to relax and have fun, everything in between. And with technology getting better all the time, who knows what amazing experiences are coming next. Absolutely. This isn't just a list of games. It shows how creative, how passionate, how innovative the gaming world is. All right, gamers, that's our deep dive into the best PS5 games in 2024. But we want to hear from why. What are you most hyped to play? What games are you hoping for in the future? Hit us up in the comments. Let us know. Maybe your pick will be in our next deep dive. Until then, happy gaming, everyone.